It has now been eight years since I've been able to call this campus home, and so I wanted to look back and give my brutally honest, unfiltered opinions of my time at UNC. And I'm gonna kind of split this into five categories, the campus slash location, academics, social life, and I'll throw athletics in there with that value and some miscellaneous stuff like parking and dining hall food quality. So as far as the campus goes, unless you toured a ton of different schools or you're transferring from somewhere, this campus is going to kind of become the only thing that you really know and become your standard for a college campus. At least that's what it was for me. And so as a result, I really enjoyed our campus. I didn't have that many complaints. I thought it was pretty with all of the nature surrounding it. I like kind of the old school vibe, you know, for it being the first public university in the nation. However, after getting the chance to go to a ton of different universities all across the country over the past couple of years, straight up, we can do better. We can definitely do better here at UNC. Now by saying that, I am no means saying this campus is bad or I didn't like it. That is not true by any stretch of the imagination. But what I do mean is after visiting some of these schools, some of which that are almost as old as UNC, you walk in some of their academic buildings, you walk in their dorms, you walk in their student union, which is a horse I have beat to death already on this channel. I think our student union could be so much better than it actually is. But y'all have heard me say that enough. Walking in their gyms, their rec facilities, most of the schools, a lot of these things are at least a little better than UNC's and there is definitely still a charm in some of these older buildings and architecture but you see the rare building like the genome science building and it really shows the potential that UNC has to create some of these modern just better spaces to do work or go to a class and you look at a building like Phillips Hall which is I think most notoriously like the one building everyone vouches to stay away from at UNC unless you have to go to a class there it is the bath don't ever go into the Phillips Hall bathrooms. And again, the building itself doesn't have to change, but like little tweaks on the inside, I think would go a long way. But that's just me. Of course, the structure of the campus itself can't really change. And honestly, I don't really have too many gripes with it. The only things I would say is the location of the business school is terrible. I don't like it. It is far too disconnected from the rest of campus. And I know there's reasons for that or whatever. And they're building a whole new building down there, which is gonna make the inside of the school definitely a bit better again is another building that I think could be way better but that's besides the point now and I'm also not a fan of how disconnected Granville is from the rest of the freshman living options but other than that even though they are a decent walk from the heart of campus I do like how the majority of freshmen live in the same area in like three main dorms on the south of campus now how you will feel about Chapel Hill itself really depends I think on where you're coming from if you're coming from a super small town in the middle of rural North Carolina. It might feel like a pretty big city with a lot going on and a lot to explore for you. But if you're coming from a big city out of state, like I met two or three students that used to live in New York City before college, and Chapel Hill to them kind of just feels like a super small, quaint little town with a little bit to do, but nowhere near what they're used to. And it's personal preference, whether you'd prefer something bigger and more lively than where you were, or something smaller. For me personally, I was a little worried about Chapel Hill being a bit too close to home, having grown up 30 minutes from here. But honestly, I never really felt like that. It, it felt, although it is very residential, pretty disconnected from the suburbia of North Carolina that I grew up in. And it's definitely a fun college town to be in, partially because it is that. It is a college town, definitely more so of that of Raleigh or Durham. And everyone that you go to school with is for the most part within this like three mile radius. And then you have Franklin Street here, AKA downtown Chapel Hill, which is basically just one main street that stretches down for a mile or two. And again, while you might find this small if you're coming from a big city, for a few years at college, I think it's everything that you need. It's got your restaurants, it's got your fast food places, it's got your shops, Target, bars. Yeah, for being a couple of steps from campus, pretty great town. I will say it is great for the first two, two and a half years, but going into junior and senior year, you do really kind of have to start finding stuff to do. And that is something that doesn't really exist in a campus that's in a big city or whatever. And Chapel Hill is super walkable and you definitely don't need a car here. But having one, especially in those years, helps a lot in doing so. And to find new stuff, you'll probably have to expand more towards Carborough, which is a small town right next to Chapel Hill, or East Franklin Street, or even go all the way to Durham. But overall, compared to a lot of the locations that I've seen of other universities, Chapel Hill is definitely up there as one of the best. And that's me being unbiased too. But that right there is uh, Chancellor Lee Roberts. He saw what I was doing and wanted to say hi. So I'll just leave it at. I met him and had a decent conversation with him. If it was Kevin G, I might have got him in the video, but not at that level with Lee yet. Sorry. All right, let's move on to academics. I feel like the acceptance rate at Carolina gets marginally lower and lower every year. And I mean, I just barely got in myself. Like I was very close to getting waitlisted and that was five years ago. So Carolina is definitely not an easy school to get into. And with that comes not so easy academics. Of course, the exact course load and rigor will differ from major to major. But in general, you're gonna have to put in a good amount of work at UNC to get a good GPA. Now that's not to say that there aren't 
quote unquote easy classes here. There definitely are some that are more gimmies than others, but they are kind of far and few between. Like I know that some other schools, some of the general education classes, which are credits that you just have to take to take the credit, they're not actually part of your major, like geology or astronomy or sociology or some like history related class are pretty easy A's. Not here, not here. My biggest wake up call was taking urban planning first semester freshman year. It was a one-on-one -on -one class. I thought it'd be a pretty easy A. I was interested in the subject, so, so I thought that would help. That ended up being one of my worst grades of college, and it didn't even count towards my major. And once you fully figure out your major and get into the thick of it in like the middle of junior year, there's gonna be days, especially because you'll probably have other extracurricular stuff going on too, where you quite literally have zero free time. You go to class, you go to the library, you maybe get dinner, you go to a club activity, then you go back and you do more work. And that's kind of the standard for a lot of weekdays here. And that's not to say that you don't have any fun here, and I'll touch on social life right after this, but you have to be prepared to have days like that. And a lot of the classes here don't necessarily give you a lot of straight up homework that's like do the next class. It's a lot more like longer term projects or just straight up a ton of content where you technically can do no work for them in between classes. But if you don't, then you're gonna be screwed come exam time or if they ask you to participate in class or something. And even my major, media and journalism, which a lot of people might consider to be an easy one. And yes, maybe it is relative to like chemistry or neuroscience or something like that. But I still have to put the work in. I didn't get an A in every class. There are very many late nights I spent writing papers. Any degree at Carolina is good, no matter what major. And if you wanna get it, you're gonna have to earn it. And I have seen friends suffer by doing like double major comp side business. It, it's common. It's common and it's probably gonna happen to you. But like I said, that doesn't come without a bit of fun. Um, let's move on to social life. I think the overall stereotype of UNC social life is work hard, play hard. And honestly, I think that's really true. I think it does have a very big work hard, play hard culture. The academics, like I said, very competitive. I didn't even touch on this. Academics are really competitive. Like there are a lot of majors, not a lot, but there's a few key majors like business and comp sci where you have to actually apply to the school to get into the major in the first place. So they are inherently very competitive. And so people definitely put in the work here. And once they put in the work, I think a lot of Carolina students party pretty hard. And, and I've seen people that have come to campus and have said that it's like dead. I don't think that's true at all. Having been here all four years, if you want to find something fun to do on a Thursday night, on a weekend, you can. There's stuff going on on campus. There's stuff going on at Frat Court. And if you're above 21, you're probably going to go out to Franklin Street. I think UNC's bar scene is pretty underrated in the grand scheme of things. You have some more chill, but iconic ones like He's Not Here and Pantana Bob's. And then you have your kind of like bar slash club mixes at Goodfellows, Still Life, and the one that you should avoid. Might as well. And yeah, on any weekend night, as long as you don't come here like over winter break or over summer break, it's going to be popping. There's going to be a lot of people in there. It's not the craziest thing in the world, but for just a couple years in college, I think that's fine. And I enjoyed it. As far as just like general campus social life, to be brutally honest, if you don't make an active effort to make friends at UNC, you're probably not gonna have very many friends at UNC, straight up. And I don't think that's necessarily the case at every school because at UNC you have at least 80% of students that are coming from in-state, that are coming from high schools that have a lot of people that they sent to UNC that already have existing friend groups. And so especially if you're coming in from out of state, it is really challenging to kind of mesh in at the beginning. Or if you're from in-state and you don't automatically have a big group of friends, same situation. And so I think UNC actually does a pretty good job of allowing students to create organizations and join clubs. And there are a multitude of them that you can join. There is almost for sure going to be one for something that you're interested in. It doesn't even have to be academics related. I always thought like flying and planes were cool. And so I randomly found and joined the UNC Aviation Club in freshman year and had some really cool experiences in there and met a couple people that I became friends with. So if you make that active effort, find out clubs, go to these meetings, or even talk to people within your major classes, that's how you'll start to find your people. And honestly, to me, I don't think I really did until the middle or towards the end of junior year. And to tie in with social life, athletics. UNC is one of the biggest athletic school in the nation. We have some of the best programs, not just men's basketball. I'm talking women's soccer, I'm talking field hockey, women's basketball. There's so many games around campus that you can get into for free as a student. And they're not only just fun to go to, but they are a great social activity as well. I mean, you're graduated, but I'm still gonna plug them. Shout out Carolina Fever. Yes, of course you do have basketball and football games as well, which honestly are like national holidays here. The entire campus is blocked off for that one day. That's all you're thinking about. And it's super 
fun. So if you're not into sports, I would encourage you to at least go to a few games. Just soak up the atmosphere, even if you don't understand what's going on, and enjoy being at one of the best athletic schools in the country, because that's something that I saw a lot of students take for granted. And then, of course, you have Greek life. I wasn't personally a part of Greek life while I was in like a business frat, but that's not true Greek life. But it is definitely a prominent part of campus. I think you can be as involved with Greek life as you want to be. If you want to rush, if that's how you want to make your friends, and if you're okay with committing an entire semester pledging and everything that it comes with, then Greek life is not a bad option. I've seen a lot of people that have truly enjoyed the fraternities or sororities that they joined, and it provided them a lot of friends, a lot of things to do. And honestly, it is kind of a cheat code to meet people, but it is also expensive. There's definitely a clicky-ish culture that comes with it. Again, it's kind of what you make of it. You don't want to be involved at all. You don't have to. And I think that kind of represents, honestly, all of social life at UNC. You kind of just get out what you put in. Doing nothing will not provide the best results. Before I get to value, I'm actually going to talk about the miscellaneous stuff real quick. First off, this is going to be a hot take. I don't think parking is as bad as people make it out to be. For your first year, you're not allowed to bring your car. And people make a big deal out of that. I don't really think much of it. I think it's beneficial to not have a car in the first year because you're living on campus anyway. So everything is walking distance and you can figure out the bus system a little bit. You have the option to get a permit sophomore year. Definitely not easy to get and the system is quite annoying. But if you play your cards right, you can definitely have your car on campus in some way even if it is at like the remote lot that's a couple miles away again in sophomore year i don't think you really need your car that much so that's okay and then junior or senior year you're most likely living off campus and you're gonna have your car at your house or apartment yo what's up just met a uh, subscriber i don't know if you subscribe but shout out i should have asked for his name but dude in the green shirt said you'd check this out later so if you are Shout out to you. And so you can definitely apply to get an on-campus permit to drive to class. And that's what I did. I didn't get one junior year. I did get one senior year for Craig Deck. Regardless, just having your car at where you live is going to be really beneficial. And you can park on campus for free after five, which after, again, going to a lot of schools, that's not the case everywhere. A lot of places are like 24 seven pay to park or permit to park. Definitely became more grateful of UNC's after five rule after that. But yes, Chapel Hill is very relentless when it comes to ticketing and towing. UNC's administration, is okay. It's definitely kind of always changing, but during my four years, there are certainly times where, you know, you kind of get the vibe that they don't care about you as much. Like the way they handled COVID in my sophomore year was kind of awful. Like, like we were on campus for one week before getting sent back, which is absurd. Um, orientation and mid students day and all of that, it's like, okay, but I've seen a lot of colleges do more for their mid students. And when it comes to even serious stuff like the shooting that happened on campus, uh, about a year ago at this point. I feel the of some of the Alert Carolina messages that were being sent. Not not the best look, but again, every college's administration has problems to an extent, and so I don't think this should be a determining factor, but also not something that should be taken lightly. And it is raining. As I mentioned, Chapel Hill weather is extremely bipolar. It was 85 and sunny when I started this. It is now 70s and about to pour. And the last miscellaneous thing I'll say and there's obviously way more factors that go into a university so if you have any more specific questions let me know but just to touch on the dining hall food mid mid is the best way i can put it and again when you're a freshman like this is kind of the only thing you know and so everything's really exciting you see all this food that you're gonna get for free technically even if you have to pay for a meal plan all the dessert sodas and everything and you're like this is awesome and now having gone to other colleges dining halls and stuff ours are okay Ours are okay. It's not necessarily that the food is bad quality. I've had some pretty good food in both of them. It's just kind of like the same stuff. Like a couple things rotate, but after a year of it, you get kind of bored of it. And so that brings me to value. If you are an in-state student at UNC, value, I always put five out of five stars, 10 out of 10, whatever you want to rate it. For under $9,000 tuition and for the quality of education that you get at UNC and a UNC degree, that is a steal. And obviously money is relative for everyone, but just compared to some of the other universities, some private ones that cost 60, 70 K, I don't think give you a much better experience or degree than UNC does. And so if you're in-state, you truly cannot beat the value. The only schools that are equal or better than Carolina prestige wise are Wake Forest and Duke, and they're both private. So they both cost way more. I would say on the other hand and international pricey, pretty pricey. Still less compared to some of the other schools that I've seen for out-of-state rates. And of course, you still get a great education, but the value in that sense has dropped like a tier to me. But if you're coming from a state that doesn't really have a great state school or university, sometimes I think that could be worth the investment. And of course, financial aid's a thing. And most people at UNC that need it end up getting it or at least get some of it. And so overall, do I think UNC is overrated? No. But do I think there's elements that are a little overhyped or that people don't talk about as much as they probably should? Yes, but do I also think there's parts that are a little overblown on how bad they are and are not as big of deals as people make it out to be? 
Yes, so it goes both ways. And when you have as good of a school as UNC is, especially those from in-state, it is hard to find anyone that really regrets going here, despite maybe struggling in classes or social life at the beginning or whatever. Honestly, in freshman year, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of UNC. Like, I didn't know if this was really my place. I was worried I wouldn't fit in. But over time, that came, and I think that's something you'll find at a lot of schools. And if you're out of state or something and debating between, like, a UNC or a UMish or Texas, that definitely exists at all of them. So hopefully some of the other stuff that I said in this video can help you make your decision one way or the other. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed my time in Chapel Hill at UNC. And uh, I know there's so much more that goes into it, so many more ups and downs that happen. But there's something I didn't touch on that you want to know my opinion on. Let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you later. Peace out.